In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down whether a 62-year-old individual with $1.9 million in their 401k should conduct a conversion. One of the biggest retirement mistakes we see people making is not knowing whether they should do a Roth conversion or not. And with so much poor advice out there, it's easy to make a wrong decision. And that's exactly why we're making the video today, to give you a scenario example and walk you through our thought process on when to do a conversion. So let's get into the video. The big questions that come up for people when they are considering doing Roth conversions and in this particular situation are, number one, should I convert 100% of my $1.9 million of 401ks to Roth or just some of it? Two, should I convert it all at once or do it over time? Or number three, should I just avoid Roth conversions completely? And I'm gonna answer those three questions by looking at a case study. But before I do that, there's a disqualifying question that you should ask yourself, and that is, am I married? Because if you're not married, then the value of Roth conversions drops unless you really care about leaving legacy to somebody important or you really hate dealing with paying taxes and you just want to get it over with. You see, Roth conversions take a long time to break even and people often see the benefit when they transitioned away from being a married filing jointly status to a single tax filer status. Of course, the single filing status hits those higher tax levels in our progressive tax system earlier than when you're married, and it's amplifying the benefits of Roth conversions for people who enjoy the married filing jointly status, but someday they're going to be a single tax filer. So the example that we're about to look at will apply to a single person or a married couple, and it really benefits that single person as long as their goal is to increase their legacy that they're gonna to leave to some person in the future. So let's take a look at Greg and Norma. Okay, here we have Greg, 62, and Norma, 57. Greg is set to retire right away at age 62, and Norma works part-time, and she wants to do that until she's also 62. Their house is paid off, and there isn't any loan, and their accounts are shown here. The breakdown is $450,000 in a joint taxable account. Greg's 401k totals $1.6 million, and Norma's is $300,000. So take a look at what they'll be spending in retirement. So there we have Norma's part-time work income, and they won't yet claim Social Security for a few years, so the portfolio withdrawals will be quite large compared to what they'll be after they receive their Social Security benefits. And you can see where the portfolio withdrawals drop quite a bit once the Social Security income is coming in. And up top here, we can see that she stops working here, and this is when required minimum distributions for him and for her start. And also we've earmarked some money to cover any custodial care needs that Medicare will not cover because remember, Medicare does not cover custodial care needs. So whenever you're asking a question like this, you need to have all your financial components written down because the decisions that you make in one area are gonna impact other areas. And in this case, it's important to note that Greg and Norma are going to be in a lower income for a bit, and that's because her part-time work is a small amount, plus they're going to wait to claim their Social Security benefits. So you might have a similar story, or you might have a big expense to pay for in your first few years of retirement. You might have deferred compensation or any other factor that will make your situation different. And now that we understand Greg and Norma's situation, let's take a look at the analysis of their tax questions about converting the $1.9 million in 401ks over to Roth. So this is the tax planning module that'll consider Greg and Norma's financial story in light of the Roth conversion. And it's also gonna answer another question, and that other question is, which order should I withdraw from my accounts? And this is where we're gonna see the benefits of having a sequence of withdrawal plan. Here we see all the different possible orders of withdrawal in addition to the Roth conversion question. We're asking what if we were to do it one way versus another. Pro rata withdrawal means that we're distributing funds equally from each account rather than doing it like this second choice here, which says taxable, tax deferred, and tax free. The next couple are different sequences. And if we look further down, we see Roth conversions to fill different tax brackets. 
to the 10%, the 12% Roth conversions to stay just below the Medicare IRMA bracket. The first one, this one is filling the 22% tax bracket. Next, you have the IRMA bracket for IRMA bracket two and three. And then this is an important distinction because sometimes you want to do Roth conversions to stay completely below the Medicare means testing, but other times it's good enough to try to stay in that first bracket and not creep to that higher Medicare bracket. Looking further, we see that we can have Roth conversions fill any particular tax bracket. And then we come to the biggest option, and that's something that Greg and Norma were wondering about. And you see here it says maximal Roth conversion. Well, that means that we convert 100% of the 401ks in one year. So the withdrawal strategy for most people is marked and that it's currently in use in this plan and that is taxable, tax deferred, and lastly, tax free. So this means that most people completely spend all of their taxable money first. So in this case, $450,000 of the taxable account for Greg and Norma would be completely depleted before going on to spend those 401k funds. And we can see that if they do it this way, the average tax rate is estimated to be 15.51%, and the total taxes paid shows 1,014,376. So that's our starting point. So looking just above that strategy, we can see that if Greg and Norma would pay slightly less taxes if they were to use a pro rata approach. Now let's look at the three questions that we brought up earlier. Number one, should I convert my 100% of my 1.9 million 401k to Roth or just some of it? Two, should I convert it all at once or over time? Or three, should I just avoid Roth conversions completely? Well, the first thing people want to know is what would happen if I just bit the bullet, so to speak, and converted 100% of the 401ks in one year? So that means they're paying the tax on $1.9 million in one year rather than over time. Now, Greg and Norma live in Colorado, so the total federal tax combined with state tax would be $722,000, $735,000 in that one year. If they lived in a different state, the tax might vary a bit. Or better yet, if they were to move to another state with lower taxes or no taxes, they might wait a year or so until they get there to make the conversion. But clearly here, $722,000 is less than the $1 million in taxes that they would pay if they don't do Roth conversions at all. But before you come to any conclusions, hang tight because in a moment, I'm going to show you the downside to doing any of these Roth conversions. Now, if we look just above the maximum Roth conversions, we can see that little green star. And here it shows the total taxes paid if they perform Roth conversions and stay just inside or just below that IRMA extra Medicare premium bracket, $476,919. So we have one clear answer here, and that is to not convert all $1.9 million in a single year because if we do, we pay about $250,000 more in taxes than we need to. So after making the comparison of the different possibilities, we're going to explore the current withdrawal strategy to this one that appears to be the best tax saving strategy. So we're gonna compare the Roth conversion below the IRMA bracket one versus the taxable, tax deferred, and tax free strategy. So as a big picture overview between the two strategies, they'd save 6.7% in taxes. They'd save an estimated $537,457 in less taxes, and they would increase their total net income and their net legacy. But you'd be surprised to learn that many people still choose not to do Roth conversions, and I'm gonna show you what leads them to make that choice. Looking at the total taxes paid, we see that the blue here is performing the Roth conversions for and paying those taxes for fewer years, but paying them more aggressively than the yellow, which is to not do Roth conversions, but rather pay lower taxes earlier and much larger taxes later. So Greg and Norma might wanna look at this ledger and try to feel what it would be like to do that. You can see the more aggressive amounts early on in this ledger beginning at $31,000 as compared to only a few thousand dollars in taxes. It might be a little bit of a head fake when they look at the nominal tax rate that they would be in as well. The blue shows 25% for the first 12 years of their retirement compared to the yellow that slowly creeps up over time. And then now let's look at when they're gonna break even on the amount of taxes paid in if they choose to do the Roth conversions. So if you follow the line, you'll see that they stopped paying taxes in 2036, but their original plan 
pays in taxes much more slowly, then those two numbers don't equal the same amount until 2051. Greg would be 89 and Norma would be 84. So how will that affect the way they feel about doing Roth conversions at all? So with all this considered, I'll give you my thoughts on this, and I'm going to give you key questions that would help to clarify a decision for Greg and Norma. And they may know the answers to these questions right away, or they may want to sleep on some of these questions because up until this point, they really haven't had a full clear picture about the impact and the pros and cons of Roth conversions for themselves. I mean, up to this point, they've only heard people say that they're a good idea, but without having their financial story right in front of them like this, how could they have made an informed decision? They can't. Without a little extra exploring, like in today's example, they're relegated to anecdotes and just gut feelings. So here are a few questions to ask to get clarity on whether they would want to convert this $1.9 million over to Roth. So the first question is, is am I willing to pay those larger tax amounts earlier? So remember, if they converted all in one year, their $2.3 million in total accounts is going to drop by about $700,000. Or if they convert it more slowly, like in the example, they're paying all these taxes for the next 12 years. And this is really a question of, can they see the big picture and keep that in mind? The next question is, is what do I believe about future tax rates? So here's a little monkey wrench in the whole thing that we just talked about. It assumes that our progressive tax rate system stays the same. Does Greg and Norma think that it's gonna stay the same? Will we eventually pay more in taxes because of our government spending? That may influence their decision. Question three is how important is legacy? You see, any money that inherits through a Roth can be given to the beneficiary and continue to defer for 10 more years of tax-free growth. You could hypothetically make your child your beneficiary and they could experience tremendous tax-free growth for 10 more years before they have to withdraw that money back out and they pay zero tax on that. So there's tremendous legacy gift implications here. Of course, you're not Greg and Norma, and here's how your situation may differ from theirs. When will you take your social security? That may be different. Your other income sources, along with when you stop working. And a big one is how are your assets stored up? Are they all in 401ks? Do you have some Roth? How much of your money has not been taxed may create a different picture for you. I've seen situations where people have been well balanced between all their different account types and Roth conversions really didn't appear to benefit them all that much. What people decide to do when it comes to these Roth conversions is largely based on how they feel about the questions that I just went over. Math isn't always the answer. It bothers a lot of people to pay taxes now and that's balancing a line between the fear of future increased taxes versus the discomfort of paying them slowly. And that tends to influence people to one side or the other. And that's something only you can decide. No planner or advisor can decide that for you. All we can do as planners is to present your options plainly so you can see it better than you could otherwise. Now that you know our step-by-step -step process and how to decide whether or not you should do a conversion, you can be better prepared to make the decision. However, if you want more one-on-one -on -one help where we look at your exact situation, click the first link in the description. See you in the next video.